In John chapter 9, verses 1, it says this. It says, and Jesus passed by, and he saw a man which was blind from his birth. And his disciples asked him, saying, Master, who did sin, this man or his parents, that he was born blind? Jesus answered, Neither hath this man sinned, nor his parents, but that the works of God should be made manifest in him. I must. Someone say, I must. Work the works of him that sent me while it is day the night cometh when no man can work amen father i thank you today i pray move me aside lord i you know i'm nothing without you i give you all the glory in advance in jesus name amen amen before you see it look at a few people and tell them night is coming Come on, tell a few people, night is coming. And you may be seated. As you're seated, you could turn to the book of Revelations chapter 20. And as you're turning there, Revelations chapter 21, I thank the Lord for my salvation. It's been uh, 20 years of, of serving the Lord now. And... Um, I'm really grateful, and I'll share a little bit of my testimony in the message, but I want to thank also Pastor Cisco and the team, and also Pastor Joe and Sister Doreen as well, and, and the Whittier Church, and uh, the whole L.A. Harbor gang. Thank you for allowing me to minister, and um, I'm grateful for the privilege, especially during a revival. Revelations chapter 20, verses 11. Someone say, ooh, he's in Revelations, look at your neighbor. See, that's deep stuff, right? Look at your Are you ready for the deep stuff? No. It's not that deep, okay? But it's, it's what's going to happen and what is happening. John, uh, Revelation chapter 20, verse 11, it says, I saw a great white throne, and I sat on it, from whose face the earth and the heavens fled away. And there was no place for them, and I saw the dead, small and great, stand before God. And the books were opened. And another book was opened, which is the book of life. Someone say the book of life. And the dead were judged out of those things which were written in the books according to their works. And the sea gave up to the dead which were in it. And the dead in hell and delivered up the dead which were in them. And they were judged every man according to their works. Uh, and the dead in hell were cast into the lake of fire. This is the second death. And whoever, whosoever was not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. Tonight I want to talk about the end times. How many, how many believe that we're in the end times? Raise your hand. Now, I've been saved for 20 years and if I were to be honest with you, I've heard that before. That we're in the end times. And sometimes you could say, well, you know, it's not because of the hurricanes and it's not because of the, you know, the wars and it's not because of the, uh, you know, all the different things that are happening. There, it's more than that. There's biblical things that are happening, prophecies that are being fulfilled as we speak. And regardless is if it is the end times or if the world is coming to an end, the Bible promises that there will come a time well, it will come to an end. In other words, it may not happen in our lifetime or it may will. But the point is, is that there will come a time when there will be no more salvation and no more uh, forgiveness and no more grace and no more mercy. There will be no more work to do as Jesus put it in John chapter 9. He says, listen, there's going to come a time when there will be no more work to do because while it is day, amen, in other words, while there is time for salvation and while there is time for forgiveness and while there is time for grace, I don't know about you, but I think God for the grace and the mercy and the blood of Jesus Christ amen because it is what has bought me it is what forgive me and I stand before you today as a saved individual because of what Jesus Christ did on that cross but there's going to come a time when there's no more salvation and there's going to be a literal book in the word in, in, in the heavenlies that is going to be 
looked at, and if your name was not written in that book, amen, the Bible says that you're going to be cast into the lake of fire. Look at your neighbor and say, I don't want to be in the lake of fire, but I want to be on fire for Jesus. Amen. So when we talk about goers and we talk about doing the work of God and we talk about taking cities and we talk about the vision of victory outreach, amen, of taking the world for Jesus Christ, amen, because how many know that's what we're doing? We're right in line with the great commission that says to go ye into all of the world and preach the gospel of Jesus Christ, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The reason that we're so passionate, the reason that we're so urgent, the reason that we need goers is because because there's going to come a time when that work will not be needed anymore. And I don't know about you, but I want to write as many names as I possibly can in that book. That's what drives me. Hey, come on, give the Lord a hand of praise if you want to be part of that. Come on, give the Lord a hand of praise if you want to be part of that. Come on, clap your hands if you say, you know what? I'm not here just to sit around in my church and feel good and be comfortable. I'm not just here to look good and look pretty, but I got a work to do in the house of God. And God be with me. I'm going to accomplish the work that God has called me to do. Come on, clap your hands. Don't look at me funny and don't look at me like you're all cold. Am I talking on fire people tonight? Hey, I know you come from fiery pastures. I know you got, come on, how many know we are taking the world for Jesus, amen? Listen, if you were to ask me if, what is it that, that has really given me the, the reason why I want to do the work of God so bad? Is, is number one, before number two, is that I'm still very grateful. Hey, how many are grateful tonight? I'm grateful. I'm grateful, again, for what Jesus Christ did. I'm grateful for the gospel, which is found in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verses 1 through 4. You can read it later. It is the gospel of Jesus Christ, amen, which basically means the good news of Jesus Christ that he came on this earth, amen, he died for our sins, he was deity, he was fully God and he was fully man and he died on that cross, a perfect man and because of that perfect sacrifice I can be forgiven, amen, and 20 years ago when I gave my life to Jesus Christ, amen, I don't know about you but I shouldn't be where I'm at right now I shouldn't, but because of the grace and because of the mercy, come on don't look at me funny, you may have never done anything bad, but you sinned because all of us have fallen short of the glory of God and because of what he did on that cross, amen, we can be forgiven of our sins. Just thank God for the grace. Thank God for the mercy. Thank, and then it keeps me grateful. I, I, yes, I was doing drugs and yes, I was, all that stuff is great but it, it, that, what, really why I'm grateful is what Jesus did on that cross. Huh? He gave us life. He gave us a second chance. He gave us a reason to live. And, and if you were to ask me secondly, the reason why I believe, why I, I want to do something for God and why I want to go out and why I want to live in South Africa is because of this, because I have purpose. Look at your neighbor and say, God didn't call me to pay bills and die. But tell them, pay your bills. Amen. Tell them, pay your bills. <laughs> I'm not saying don't pay your bills. Oh, Pastor Louis said, I don't got to pay my bills because God told me not. Pay your bills. I said, just. Okay. It's to pay your bills. But God didn't call me just to pay bills and die. I have a purpose. I have a reason to live. I have a reason to get up in the morning. I have a bigger purpose than just to survive and just to live on this earth. But there is a bigger picture that God has called me to be a part of. And I don't know about you, but I thank God, amen, that he's given us purpose, a reason to live. That's why I gave my life to God at 13 years old. And that's why God spoke to me when I was 15 years old that I was going to be a pastor. And ever since that moment, I've given myself to the work of God. And I said, God, I don't have it all together. I may not be the best candidate. I may not be the one everyone will pick. But I'm going to be willing to do whatever it is that you're telling me to do. I will say yes. I'll do it. 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 Purpose. When I look at our founders, 
and, and the time I get to spend time with him. And, I, and, and, and just this trip, I was able to spend a whole weekend with him. And I, and I think to myself, what a man that just has purpose. That's why he continues to, even right now, he's there in Panama, praise the Lord. And even right now, we got our, our pastors there in Amsterdam right here from, from, the, from the L.A. Harbor and from Whittier Church. And also Pastor Sonny Jr. is there as well. And, and that's why we even got some pastors that are in Spain right now. And we got pastors all over the world literally doing the work of God. Why? Because they got purpose. See, some people just don't have purpose. They, they just exist. There's no reason for you to live. You're just here. You're just, you're just existing. Hello. And, and, or some of you are just disobedient and don't want to listen to God and just want to do your own thing. And you, you want to be happy. Come on, somebody. That's what I challenge you to do. Stop trying to be happy. Make God happy and watch yourself get happy. Because God knows you better than you know yourself. Don't get mad at me. I, you know, because as a pastor, you get a lot of people, pastor, I just want to be happy. I says, stop trying to be happy. Make God happy. Go after God's purpose and watch. He'll make you happy in his purpose for your life. See, there's going to come a time in Thessalonians that the Bible says that we are going to be raptured. Hey, look at your neighbor and say, I'm gone. The Bible says that Jesus is going to come on a cloud and he's going to call up his bride and he's going to call up his, his, those that are redeemed. He's going to call them up in the air. He's not going to come on the earth. He's going to come in a cloud and he's going to say, come on up. And the first, the dead in Christ are going to rise. Amen. The dead in Christ are going to rise first. And then those that are still alive are going to be caught up in the air with them. So I don't know how long that process is going to take because you're talking about billions of people. It's just my interpretation. It could be a, a blink of an eye like the Bible says the rapture happens. But, but then all of a sudden after that, then all of a sudden the people they you know that are that are not that are dead are going to rise first so I don't know if that's something that we're going to see real fast I don't know if your auntie is going to knock on the door and say hey you know uh, I'm alive again so let's go up to, to Jesus he's here come on somebody I don't know about you but you're going to see all of your loved ones again amen don't let the devil listen this is what the end times this is what the rapture this is what heaven is our promise amen you're going to see your mom again you're going to see your dad again you're going to see your brother again you're going to see your grandma or grandpa you're going to see Everybody that died, amen, in, in, in salvation, they're going to be caught up with us in the air. We're going to stand before Christ. Amen. Then the, there's going to be a seven-year tribulation that takes place on earth. Those that did not receive Christ, those that did not repent. The Antichrist is going to make his, his presence known. But while we're in heaven, those that are redeemed, we're going to face what they call the judgment seat of Christ. Ooh, someone said, I thought we weren't going to be judged. No, you're going to be judged. And you're not going to be judged for your sins. Someone say, thank you, Jesus, if you've received Christ. I don't know about you, but I thank God he's going to, the Bible says that he casts your sin in the sea of forgetfulness. Never will he throw it in your face, amen. Never will he tell you, or I, remember you did that? Remember, you know, he's going to forget it because that's what the blood is able to do. Wash away. That's what it means. He washes away your sins. But you're going to be judged not for your sins, but you're going to be judged for your works. Yeah. You're going to get judged for what you did for Christ or what you did not do for Christ. So why are we so urgent and why are we doing what we're doing? Why, why? Because there is going to come a time where I'm going to stand before Christ and God's going to say, what did you do with your salvation? What did you do with what I gave you? Did you, oh, well, that person hurt me and that person did this and, oh, I don't want to do ministry anymore because of that. You're not going to be able to say any of that. You're going to stand before God and you're going to have to say, God, I, I, you know, I, I didn't want to do it. Or you're going to say, God, I didn't want to do it, but I did it anyway I buckled up I said God whatever your will is for my life I'm willing to sacrifice I'm willing to go to another country God I'm willing to go to another city God I'm willing to take whatever it is I gotta take I'm willing to go all the way I'm willing to be a goer because I know that I'm gonna stand before you one day and I want to say and I want to hear you say well done my good and my faithful servant now you may 
enter into your rest. We're going to get crowns in heaven. Hey. Huh? There's going to be five crowns that we're going to get in heaven. There's going to be rewards in heaven. And here's the deal. The Bible says in, in 1, Corinthians, or 1 Corinthians chapter 3 that if there's going to be rewards for you in heaven. And if those, and if the only rewards you're going to get is what you did only what you did for Christ. If you did ministry for so-and-so and you did ministry even for yourself. If you were unpure in your ambition and just wanting to be somebody in the church and not doing what you were doing for Christ, the Bible says all those things are going to disappear. Only what you did for Christ. And only that's why sometimes we're, we're going to be shocked when we get to heaven and some people are going to get rewards and some people are going to get crowns, amen, that we didn't even think of. It's going to be that person that's in their prayer closet. It's going to be that person that's winning souls. It's going to be that person that says, God, I will give you everything. I surrender everything to you. It's going to be that person. We're gonna, you know, is there going to be a crown for soul winners? Are there any soul winners in the house? There's going to be a crown for those that are, have a maturity when it comes to temptation. Hello, somebody. Amen. Look at your neighbor and say, you're going to get that crown. Amen. There's going to be a crown for those that learn how to strive. Hey. In other words, you're running, you know, a runner. In other words, you may not always run fast, but you're always moving forward. Hey. Sometimes, but you're going to be running this race. And you say, I'm going to walk this narrow road. Even if my friend's not going to do it. Even if my best friend's not going to do it. Even if my family's not going to do it. I'm going to do what God has called me to do. Because I'm going to stand before Christ one day. And nobody else is going to be around. All of a sudden, the rewards come. Then we're going to come down. Seven years after. And we're going to come down with Jesus on the second coming. Amen. And he's not stopping in the clouds this time. But he's coming down on the ground. Amen. And he's getting ready. And guess who's behind him? The army of the Lord. Is the army of the Lord in the house right now? Are you ready to be the army of God? A soldier in the army of God. It don't start then. It starts right now. You say, God, whatever you want me to do, I'm going to be that soldier. Why are we so militant? Why are we so urgent? Because that's what our priority should be. Whatever it is that God wants, he gets. Whatever it is he wants us to do, we're willing to do it. Why? Because we know that one day we're going to be right there next to him. And he's going to say, it's time to come down. It's time to come down. And we're going to fight. Yes, we're going to fight with God. And guess what? It's a losing battle. And yes, it's going to be a sad day for the atheist. It's going to be a sad day for the non-Christian. It's going to be a sad day for those that did not receive Christ. Christ because we're coming down and we're not coming down as Jesus did the first time because he went into Jerusalem on a donkey the first time but this time he's coming on a horse and he's coming with power and he's coming with authority and he's coming with a passion to be able to say you didn't want to serve me so this is it this is your time is short this is it no more salvation going to be a thousand year millennia reign after that. Satan's going to be cast into hell, chained up in hell for a thousand years. Jesus is going to reign on earth. He's going to reign for a thousand years. We're going to be in our glorified bodies. Hello, somebody. <laughs> Look at your neighbor and say, I'm going to float. <laughs> We're going to have floating battles. Who <laughs> That's a whole other teaching, but we're going to be blessed. Trust me. And we're going to sit there with God and reign with God. He's going to be in, Christ is going to reign. We're going to be with him. After that thousand years, the devil's going to be released one more time. All this is in Revelation 20. You can read it. The Bible says that the enemy is going to be released one more time. And then people, are, there's going to be a somewhat of a deception that could possibly take place in people's lives. And then that's it. 
That's it. The enemy is going to be cast into the lake of fire. And this is where we pick up the story. Where now Jesus says, now, all, that, all those that were in hell, all those that died without Christ, or those that were in Armageddon against Christ, they're all going to stand before Christ. And they're going to be judged now. And they're not going to be judged, amen, like we're going to be judged. They're going to be judged. And they're going to be sentenced to eternal damnation. And look at your neighbor and say, that's a long time. That's like the sandlot, forever. Look at your neighbor and say, forever. <laughs> I love that, the movie. I say it jokingly, but the reality is, is that time will not be funny. I have three points for you tonight, and I'm going to move through them quickly. Jesus said... Number one, that we must work because the works of God could be on display. See, this man, this blind man had a problem, but God was about ready to give him a public display. See, sometimes God gives it to you privately, but sometimes God gives it to you publicly. This man was stuck in this situation, and the Bible says that the disciples asked, who sinned, this man or somebody else? Or Because the Jewish custom was that if they were to have some type of infirmity, they had to have had sin. Even if they could even sin as they're in their mother's womb, or they have to take on the sins of their parents. So they had this belief as Jewish people, and, and all of a sudden, Jesus had to correct them and say, listen, it's not because of this man's sin. There is no sin involved, amen. The reason that this happened is because so that the work of God can be displayed in this man's life. And listen, I want to let you know something tonight. God's anointed now generation. Sometimes, amen, when you're doing everything you can for God, and you're doing all the work you can for God, Sometimes you're still going to go through a lot of stuff. But sometimes what God's trying to do is he's trying to set you up for something bigger and something better. And if you just hold on and be patient and don't give up, God is going to elevate you, amen. And everybody's going to know about it. I said everybody's going to know about it, amen. Everyone's going to know. And guess what everyone's going to do? Really? You... Look at Jeffrey say, really you? No. Wow. That's what they did to this man. They, they looked at him and said, how in the world did you change? God says, listen, I wanted to do work in this man's life. And if I want to do work in this man's life, then I'm able to accomplish and be successful in that work. I'm able to bring about success through this man's life, even though he's been through a lot of pain. And sometimes, listen, God's about ready to shock some people in your life. I said, oh, look at your neighbor and say, he ain't getting it. Come on now. Look. God's about ready to shock some people in your life. Hey, God's about to shock your mom. He's about to shock your dad because your dad's going to say, what happened in that three-day revival, amen? You, 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 you started in some way on Tuesday, but all of a sudden on Saturday, something happened to you in that three-day revival. The Holy Spirit touched your life. Some of you are going to shock, amen, your leaders. You're going to shock people around you. Nobody's going to think anything could happen to you. And just like this man, when all these people were looking at him and saying, how did it happen? And what did it happen? And what day did it happen? And they had all these questions. This man was able to look back at them and tell them, listen, I don't know about you guys. I don't know why it happened, how it happened, or where it happened. But all I know is this, that I was blind, and now I see. Come on, somebody. And that's what God's about ready to do in your life. In other words, when God gives you that breakthrough, and when God raises you up, and when God makes you a goer, somebody that nobody thinks should go, nobody, nobody thinks is the best candidate, or you may not be the person that nobody's looking at, all of a sudden when you step out by faith, and you take that city, and you take that country, and you take that continent, you're going to be successful. Why? Because all you're going to do when that happens is you're going to point up and say, it couldn't have been me, only because of the grace and the mercy and the favor of God upon my life. Come on, clap your hands if you say that's me. 
Come on, shout. Come on, shout. Say, I'm called. Say, I'm going to go. I may not be the best candidate. I may be the one that nobody thinks or nobody should. But all of a sudden, God specializes in shocking people. God specializes in the people that shouldn't do it. This man shouldn't have gotten a breakthrough. But because God was building him up to get a, a big platform. Hey, you say, well, who else went through that? Joseph went through that. Joseph went through that. Joseph was mistreated. Huh? He was wrongly accused. He was even disregarded by his family. But he said in Genesis chapter 45, when he had the chance to kill his own family, he says, why would I do that? Did not God allow all this to happen for the saving of many lives? See, God has a bigger purpose than you think sometimes. Sometimes what God's trying to do is he's trying to enlarge your mentality. He's trying to enlarge your capacity. He's trying to enlarge you. He's trying to stretch you so that when you do go and when you do that thing for God, you're able to handle it. So sometimes, listen, I know you've heard this before, but I'm going to say it again. It's not because you're doing anything wrong that you're going through trials right now. It's because you're doing everything think right right now and you're giving your best to God and don't stop don't stop coming to church don't co stop coming to the altars don't stop coming to these places amen and giving your all to God because God is a debtor to no man what about Job Job was was afflicted hey Job was financially unstable hey somebody he lost everything God took everything away Yes, yes, it was the Lord that allowed the setback for a comeback. Hey, he allowed the setbacks so there could be even a greater comeback. Don't we love comebacks? Hey, don't we love, well, I don't know if you love when the Patriots came back last, this year, but there's mixed emotions, but wasn't that a crazy comeback? Nobody thought that, everybody thought they were going to lose. All of a sudden, the comeback, it's like Rocky, come on. It's like, it's like somebody that's supposed to lose. And the whole movie, they're losing. And all of a sudden, the last 10 minutes, the music comes on. Hello, somebody. All of a sudden, something starts switching up in that mentality. All of a sudden, you thought you were a loser. And all of a sudden, you say, I'm not a loser. I'm, not, I'm, not a, I'm a winner in Jesus. Amen. I have the victory. I'm not going to let the devil steal what God has promised me. Come on. If that's you, clap your hands a little bit tonight. The Apostle Paul also went through trials, went through all kinds of stuff. These men, just like this blind man, God was trying to display a work in his life. He was trying to make himself known in his life. He was trying to reveal what he can do. In other words, sometimes, sometimes, listen, what God's trying to do is he's trying to remind you that he's big enough to do that work in your life. Sometimes what God's trying to do is he's trying to remind you that he's strong enough, hey, that he can do it, amen, that no matter how big or how strong this thing is, I'm stronger, I'm bigger, I am able to turn any situation around, amen, in your life. God's able to restore a marriage. God's able to restore a calling. God's able to restore somebody that maybe lost it and gone off. God's able to bring them back and say, listen, I still got a calling on your life. Listen, you might have done some mistakes here tonight but I guarantee you that there's nothing bigger amen there's nothing stronger than what God can turn around in your life you see sometimes that's what it takes he said this so the works of God might be on display see Jesus had an assignment from heaven that's why he was going that's why he was, he was an assigned. It was an assignment. It wasn't something that he wanted to do necessarily. It's what he had to do. Huh? How many know we're not under the law? Hey, hey. We don't have to do nothing. We should want to do it because God has told us to do it. There's a sense of urgency Jesus had in his heart to say, I have to do this even though I want to do this. It may not be something popular that's why as a young man at 13 years old is there any 13 year olds in the house hey 
Anybody 13, 14? I know there's a young girl that preached. <laughs> well, you're not no more. Amen. <laughs> Jesus said, as a young man, he says, listen, don't you know that I have to be about my father's business? Later on, he said, my food is to do the will of my father. Even at the cross, as he was standing before the cross in the Garden of Gethsemane, and he was getting ready to even quit himself, he didn't want to do it. So sometimes we get it twisted. We think that everybody wants to go out. But really, some people don't. But then that obedience comes to God's will for your life. Jesus said, God, if there's another way, hey, if you could send me to a nice place, Lord, or if you could do this, God, then do it. I'll go. But Jesus said, God, if there's another way, let it happen. But nevertheless, not my will, but let your will be done. That's what he said. So from a young man all the way to his death, he was willing to give his life to the Father and say, God, this is not my will, God, but whatever you want to do within my life. Is there any pastors in the house tonight? Is there missionaries in the house tonight? Is there people of God that say, I want to do something for God? The Lord spoke to me when I was 15 years old that I was going to be a pastor. I became a licensed minister when I was 25 years old. I've been out there as a missionary for seven years now, seven, eight years. Listen, there's nothing you can't do when you just say, God, whatever your will is, and you step into God's will, you will be successful. See, again, God loves to give man purpose. That's what he said. He said in Genesis, uh, when he told Adam, when he, when he was uh, making Adam, he said, Adam, when you're born, don't just hang out in the garden, but I want you to name all the animals. In other words, man was created to want purpose. That's why sometimes we're, we're not happy. That's why sometimes we're, we're you know, because we don't have real purpose. So I dare you tonight to let God put a purpose in your heart. Because when you know that, you will not get discouraged. You'll go after it. Paul said it a different way in 1 Corinthians chapter 12. He says all of us are part of the body, but every part is important to be able to function, to be able to do what God's called us to do. In other words, all of us are important. I don't know about you, but there's, there, listen, there's enough world for all of us. Some people say, oh, I never get a turn to go out. Listen, there's enough world for all of us. Huh? We, we're not even touching Asia right now. How many, how many would say, oh, I'll go to Asia? Raise your hand. Come on. Uh, I'm going to go to Africa. Europe. America. Come on now. Any America? Come on. Okay, that's Asia. Amen. Ge geographics right there. Amen. Thank you. It's a gang service. I'm a little fun. Okay, don't get mad at me. You see, this man, Jesus, exemplified something very important. Listen, and I'm, I'm closing right now. I'm almost finished. He exemplified something, a, a mentality. And the mentality was this. What's next? Because I'm not just existing. There is a plan for my life. And again, I got saved at 13. I didn't know nothing about God. 15 years old, God called me a pastor. I didn't even know what a pastor was. I didn't know anything. But I, whatever God wanted. If that meant doing a sound ministry, hello somebody. That meant being an usher. You know, before I went out to South Africa, you know what my international role was? Head usher. For all the conferences and conventions. Amen. Amen. I was a super usher. Amen. I had the little, you know, the thing and look all professional and stuff. But you know what I love? The reason, the reason that 
I'm willing to do that is because I knew God called me. And if I just keep busy for the Lord, my time is going to come. It's those that are sitting around waiting for the call to come. When is it going to come? It's never going to happen like that. you got to say, what do you want from me now? What do you want to do for me now? There is still a city to reach now. There's a youth ministry to build now. There's a, there's a city, there's a country to reach right now. I don't got to wait. Don't wait till you go till you got to go across the world. Just go across the street. There is souls that God has called us to reach, amen. There is an assignment from heaven that God has called you to do, amen. And it starts right now. It doesn't start when you go out and you take a city and go to a country. It starts right now in your city. Whatever city that you represent here in the L.A. Harbor region, God has called you to take that city, amen. And guess what? God has anointed you to do it. God has empowered you to do it. God has given you the success to do it. I don't know about you, but I know like I know that there is more for me I'm not satisfied where I'm at I got more inside of me I got more life inside of me and until my dying breath I'm gonna do like the apostle Paul I'm gonna pour it out 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 I'm gonna give everything I can is there anybody with me come on God's anointed now generation you say I want to give everything I got I may not got a little bit I may not have all the experience I may not have all the knowledge but I'm gonna give everything that I got come on clap your hands come on shout and make some noise you see the Bible says listen there's gonna come a time when there will be no more work to do Jesus gives us a plain picture he says work while it is day now we're still in day day represents a time of salvation, a time of forgiveness, a time to take our cities, a time to get serious and to get urgent about souls. Listen, I know sometimes young people especially, we think we have time. But listen, please listen. You don't know if you have time. And, and, and as a believer, we don't know when the time's going to come that Jesus is going to come back. And if we're going to say, some of us, you know, we say, we say, well, I'll serve God in the tribulation. Amen. I've heard a lot of people say that, especially young people. Well, I'll just live like a sinner and I'm going to get saved during tribulation. Listen, you, you're, you're asking to do something very, very difficult. How many haven't eaten for two days or three days before? Amen. None of us. Amen. Don't lie. Unless you're fasting. Amen. You know you're not going to be able to eat unless you take the mark. Today's the day of salvation. Because if you take that mark, you become an enemy of God. And you no longer are even in candidacy to get saved. You're going to be an enemy. So if you don't eat, you're going to die. And if you take the mark, you're going to be an enemy of God. It's not going to be easy to serve God in tribulation. It's going to be one of the hardest things ever. And guess what? The Holy Spirit's not going to be there. You're going to be on your own. Don't take that chance. Today is a day. Because night will come when no man can work. The Bible says that in Romans that every knee shall bow. And every tongue will confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. And there's going to come a time when we're going to stand with Christ. And we're going to open a book. He's going to open the book. And he says, if your name is not written in that book, that's it. I don't know about you. But my city of Pretoria that I'm in right now, I want to write as many names as I can in that book. That's the bigger picture. That's why we're urgent. That's why we want to go out. Because that's at the end result. That's what it's all going to be about. Is standing before Christ and being judged. Those that are judged, hopefully if you're saved for your works. Or if you're not, you're going to be judged for your sin. And that's it. This is why we're urgent.
This is why Pastor Sonny is right now in Panama. Come on. This is why Pastor Sonny Jr. and Pastor Joe is in Amsterdam. This is why, amen, some of the pastors are in Spain right now. This is why some of us as, as missionaries are in South Africa right now. This is why we're taking the city. This is why we're building bases. This is why we're trying to do our best to build our youth ministries. This is why we're doing what God has called us to do because there is a world. When we say we want to take the world for Jesus, we're not just saying that so we can build big churches. We're saying that because there is going to be a time that God is going to answer and say victory outreach. Amen. I called you to take every inner city of the world. I called you to reach stretched out of darkness. I called you to reach hidden riches and secret places. What did you do with the promise that I gave you? Did you put it to work? Did you do your best? Did you go out there and tell people about Jesus? Listen, tonight, I believe the Holy Spirit wants to fill you one more time and put that urgency to say, you know what? I'm ready. I want to do something for God. I want to do what God's called me to do. I don't want to just kind of just be here in the church. I want to do something for God tonight. Let God light you on fire. If God spoke into you as he sing this song, I want you to step out of your seats and I want you to come. Come on. Come on, come to these altars. In the name of Jesus, come on. Close your eyes. Close your eyes. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Be a, be a God pleaser. Please the Lord. Don't please man. You're going to get hurt. You're going to get bitter. You, you do everything you do, you do it for Christ. We honor, we honor our leaders, we honor our pastors. But don't do it for any man. When you do it, you do it for Christ. Because that's where you're going to stand before. Don't be a goer because it's cool or because oh I just want to it looks sometimes that's unfortunately that's how sometimes we could think be a goer because you love souls build your gang ministry because you love souls win souls win the lost that life group for souls to raise up disciples so they can win more souls you see the Holy Spirit I believe wants to fill you tonight 
every head bowed, every eye closed tonight. But before I do that, I can't preach a message like this and not offer salvation. I'm not going to make a large plea. But if you can, just every hand could be down right now. And just close your eyes if you can. On the count of three, if you say, I want to make sure my name is written in that book. I don't want to. I don't want to be someone that's left behind. The Bible says, if you believe that Jesus died for those sins that you've created, all of us have sinned. He says, if you believe that my blood was able to wash away those sins, and by faith and through grace, that you could forgive me, the Bible says you're going to be saved. And it's not a prayer of repetition. It's a, it's a prayer of faith. On the count of three, if that's you, I want you to lift up your hand. You say, I, I'm, I want to make sure. Lift up your hand. One, two, three. Lift up your hand. Amen. 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 Thank you, Jesus. Come on, give them a hand. Amen. But don't lose that. Close your eyes. If you lifted up your hand, I want you to say this. Say, Jesus. Come on, say Jesus. And don't, don't just repeat. Hear what I'm saying and, and believe it also. Don't just repeat it. Believe it. So hear what I'm saying. Say, Jesus, I ask you to forgive me of all my sins. I believe that you died on a cross. And your blood wipes away all my sins. I believe right now that you are God. Thank you, Jesus, for my salvation. I accept you as my Lord and as my Savior. In Jesus' name. That's what we're going to do right now, one time. Lift up your hands, everyone at these altars. Are you ready for the Holy Spirit to come right now? It's going to come in a wind. And it's not for you. You're going to, get, you're going to feel the power of God. But it's not for you. It's going to be for you to tell other people. Because that's what the Holy Spirit, it gives you the power to witness. And all of a sudden... You're weak, all of a sudden boldness comes over your life. You're going to take your high school. You're going to take your junior high. You're going to take your, your community. You're going to take your city. You're going to take your, your country. Whatever it is that you represent, you're going to take it because the Holy Spirit is going to give you power to be able to be successful. Are you ready? Lift up your hands. Come on. Listen. Listen. I live, live 10,000 miles away. I don't get to call people as much as I, I want to and like to because it's, it's time difference and it's hard. I do, trust me. What I've learned to do is I've learned to trust the Holy Spirit and let Him fill me. Because sometimes as believers, we get empty. And we're going and we're going and we wonder why we don't go forward. It's because we're out of gas. And we need the Holy Spirit to touch us again. Even if you're in their seats, or lift up your hands tonight. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. This is what I want you to do. On the count of three, I want you to say power. As loud as you can. When I, on the count of three, say power. And then we're going to sing this song. And, I, and the Holy Spirit is going to touch you. Ready? Count it, lift up your hands. Ready? On the count of three, I want you to yell power. One, two, three. Power. Say it again. Say it again. Power. Say it again. Come on. Now lift up your hands. Come on. Here it comes right now in the name of Jesus. Come on, lift it. Close your eyes. Come on. Come on. In the name of Jesus. 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 In
start to touch you right now. I see power right now. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. yourself as not worthy or, or somebody that can't do it you're a man of God in the name of Jesus you're a man of God man of God in the name of Jesus man of power man of faith in the name of Jesus touch him right now Holy Spirit touch him right now that's it let it go that's it that's the Holy Spirit let him breathe on you right now let him breathe on you right now in the name of Jesus. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. That's okay. Let it go. That's it. Let it go in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. That's it. Power right now. Oh, that's it. Now in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, hallelujah. Whoa. Come on. That's it. Come on, that's it. Come on, sister. Come on. Let the Holy Spirit touch you right now. That's it. Don't give up. Don't give up. Don't give up. Don't give up in Jesus' name. Don't grow weary. Don't grow weary in doing good. Don't grow weary in doing good. Be filled right now. That's it. Let it be filled right now. Shut up. In the name of Jesus, that's it. In the name of Jesus, power right now. Breathe, breathe on her right now, Holy Spirit. Breathe on her, Holy Spirit, now, now. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus. That's it. Oh, in the name of Jesus. 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 Come on. That's it. That's it now in the name of Jesus. 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 Oh, ra 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 ba 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 sa ka ra 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 ba ka ta. Yes, Lord, right now. Holy Spirit, breathe on her right now. Holy Spirit, breathe right now. Sha ta ra 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 ba ka ta. That's it. Let it go right now. There's a city with your name on it. There's a city with your name on it. There's a city. There's a city with your name on it. Oh, don't despise. Don't despise from the beginnings. Oh, da 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 bakaya, da 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 basaya, da 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 bakaya. Oh, that's it. There's a. That's it. That's it. There's a city. That's it. Don't despise humble beginnings. Don't despise humble beginnings. That's it. Don't despise it. It's okay. God's going to raise you up. 
Oh, God's going to raise you up. There's a city with your name on it in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Listen, there's a world to reach. There's a world to reach. There's so much more to do. There's so much more to do. Put a, Father, I pray, put a passion in his heart right now. Let him not quit. Let him not quit. Let him be somebody that perseveres, oh God. Perseveres, oh God, through trials. Perseveres through temptations. That, Lord, that he may answer, Lord, your work for his life. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, touch him right now. Holy Spirit, that's it. In the name of the Holy Spirit, touch him right now. Power right now. Hallelujah. If you can speak in tongue, go ahead. Come on, if you can speak, go ahead. That's okay. We're still Holy Ghost. I was just talking to Pastor Sonny. He says, we need the Holy Ghost. He says, does the, does the youth still speak in tongues? Do we still believe in the power of the Holy Spirit, the Holy Ghost? That gives us power. Come on. Come on, edify that spirit. Edify that spirit in you. Come on. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. My sister right here, lift up your hands. Somebody, somebody just let her know I'm talking to her. Just right here. Yeah. Lift up your hands. My sister, that's it. Right there where you're at. That's it. Lift up your hands. That's it. Here it comes. In the name of Jesus. Right now, Father. Lord. That's it. That's the peace of God right now over your life. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. That's it. Let it go right now. No one's going to touch you. The Holy Spirit's touching you by himself. That's it. That's it. The Holy Spirit's touching all by himself. Nobody has to touch you. Right now, in the name of Jesus. Peace. Let peace right now. That's it. That's it now. Power right now. Power right now in the name of Jesus. We need power. We're limited. We're weak. But when the power of God comes over us, we're overcomers. We're victorious. You're not, a, you're, not, you're, you're not what anybody says you are, what you think you are. You are a woman of God. And let the Holy Spirit touch you right there where you're at. In the name of Jesus. I said, let it go right now. I said, that's it. In the name of Jesus. 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 I love this. This is what we need. If we want to do the work of God, if we want to be goers, we can't have a, super, a superficial Christianity. It, it, we, it can't be natural. It has to be supernatural. Just take a few more minutes and I'm done. I know we have afterglow and we're going to have fun and fellowship, but just take, give me a few minutes and I'm done. How many feel the call of God in their lives? Lift up your hands. Come on. Hallelujah. You know, my first missionary journey was to Miami, Florida. I was 18 years old, fresh out of high school. I think, I think, I think God, but also our founder, I think we need to see more of that. Those young people. 
You don't got to be older. Amen. There's nothing wrong. But you don't have to wait. You can do something for God. If that's you, you say, man, out of high school, you're a young person. Come on, if you're, you're in high school right now, lift up your hands. You, come on, lift up your hands. If you're in high school, come on. Where are they at? There's a few right here. Come on. God's going to use you to take your high school for Jesus. Don't hold back. I just going to pray for one more, one more person. That's it. One more people, I should say. You say, I feel called to go. I want to be a missionary, a pastor, no matter what age you are. I want you to lift up your hand. Come on. Real high. So, so everybody can see it because now you're accountable. I heard the heart of our founder, and he said, there's got to be more. And a lot of us are like, how? And, you know, man, okay, I want to go, but how? And when? And all these different things. You know, when, when, I, when God released me is when I was willing to do whatever. Because I wanted to go out. I wanted to pastor. I wanted to pastor in New York. That's what I wanted. God, I felt God telling me to do that. But when, when Pastor Sonny sent me, to, went on lunch with him, and I say that humbly, he says, you're willing to go to South Africa? And I thought, oh, man, I want to go to New York. Thank God I didn't listen to myself. Thank God I didn't try to manipulate and try to, oh, I'm going to go here and I'm going to do it this way. I says, whatever. You know, it would have been a sad day. It would have been a sad day if I would not have known the people that I know now in my church. Because I just wanted to do something I wanted or something that was in my heart. I thank God that just said, God, I don't care. I'll do whatever. I'll, I'll go wherever. I'll go to South Africa. I've never been to South Africa. I don't know what it's like. I know nothing, but trust me, when I got to there and I put my feet on that ground for the first time, I knew God called me there, and I knew I'd probably live my life there, and I listened to me. I wanted to leave six months into that commitment. Thank God I didn't leave six months in that commitment, and then a few years later, I had an opportunity to come back to the States, and I said, no, God. God, you called me to be here in South Africa. I'm willing to stay here as long as you want me to live and guess what I made it my home thank God that I didn't say no every time the opportunity came that was valid because now thank you Jesus we have a church of hovering over 300 right now and we're gonna believe in God for 400 we're believing God for 500 church we're, we have a men's and a women's home of 17 ladies in our women's home right now we got we got a youth gang of 80 plus young people we got all our church is ran by South Africans. We only have one other missionary, Pastor Henry and Sister Irene. We're the only ones there from America. All of our leadership is right there from the city of Pretoria. God has raised up the disciples. We're sending out teams, amen, to other cities from our church now. We're getting, we have tripled our United We Can. Last year's United We Can giving, we tripled it this year. Thank God that I didn't quit when I felt like quitting because I would not see what I'm seeing today. I literally travel the world and I get to preach in all these churches. Listen to me. It's not about that, but it's about saying God, that yes, when it doesn't mean sense or when you don't want to do it. Come on, lift up your hands one more time. You say, I'm, I'm willing. I want to do it. Come on. Father, right now in the name of Jesus, Lord, I ask you Give us a surrendered heart. Give us a surrendered heart. Let us not be picky in where we want to go, God. Let us not figure it all out and then be willing to go. Lord, let us be willing to go wherever it is that you want us to go, God. Father, I pray right now that as we do that in obedience to you, if that means now just serving in our church, then Lord, that's what it means, God. We want to be obedient to what you're telling us to do, God. Because we know one day, when you give us those crowns and you give us those rewards, we're going to take those crowns and we're going to take those rewards and we're going to lay it at your feet. 
and we're going to say, God, everything I did, I did it for you. And here, I know you gave me those crowns, and I know you gave me those rewards, but it was never for me. God, it was always all for you. Everything I did, I did it for you. I sacrificed.